According to Wikipedia, Alien Isolation is a survival horror video game developed by Creative Assembly and based on the Alien science fiction horror film series, and places a strong emphasis on stealth and survival horror gameplay, requiring the player to avoid and outsmart a single alien creature over the course of the game. That is just the blandest possible way to describe this experience. Yes, at its core, that's what it is. A first-person survival horror game, where you have to sneak around and try and avoid the alien. And yes, that's alien, not aliens. What this game does is successfully translate the tone of Ridley Scott's stalker slash killer, but it's in space, horror classic, into an interactive medium. Every aspect of the design pays homage and in some cases downright deifies Scott's film. From the claustrophobic hallways to the dark corners, the flickering fluorescent lights and the single color CRT screens, it really feels like you're reliving a 1979 vision of the future. And at the same time, all this technology feels archaic, as if in the future of this game, Sevastopol Station is running on old tech. It's falling apart, forgotten. You can tell from the environment that Siegson lost the tech race against Wayland yutani All their computers are clunky, their doors are easily rewired, and their androids, working Joes, eschew the human mimicking look of their Wayland yutani counterparts. They look humanoid enough, but with rubbery skin and red eyes, they look downright terrifying in dark rooms. Sevastopol is a dangerous place and you play the game as a lone survivor, Amanda Ripley. Amanda is not some roided space marine, she's an engineer, and not even a bloodthirsty one like Isaac Clark stomping his way through the Ishimura. No, she feels more like an unlikely survivor, making it out alive with a blend of ingenuity, fear, and dumb luck. Of course, she does have some skills to make her life and your life easier. She can run, she can hide, and she can craft. Yes, Alien Isolation does have a crafting system, with materials littered across the environment that can be used to make Molotov cocktails, health kits, noisemakers and the like. And although I'm generally not a fan of crafting systems in horror games, in Isolation it makes sense. Partly because Amanda is an engineer, but also to build anything, you need to find blueprints first. It's not just a case of she knows right off the bat how to build these things. She needs to find and study these blueprints. And in my mind, I can see her picking up that blueprint and thinking of replacement parts she can use from the environment. Of course, this doesn't explain why there are blueprints for Molotov cocktails on a space station. But I suppose this has to be a video game in some ways. Also, I'm not a psychologist, but I think it was brilliant to give the protagonist the Ripley name. You see, the name Ripley is synonymous with survival. Even if you've never actually seen an alien form, pop culture has done a fantastic job of ingraining the idea of Ripley, badass female survivor in the collective subconscious. The effect being that playing as a Ripley subconsciously influences your playstyle. I know personally I took some risks during my playthrough that I normally wouldn't in a survival horror. Of course it doesn't always pay off. But it's definitely a learning experience. As I said in paragraph 2, the environment is beautifully rendered through a 1979 vision of the future. The same can be said of the audio design. Many of the sound effects are taken from the alien form as well. The scrape of steel doors opening. That weird low wail of the alarms. We will be with you momentarily. Shit! The hiss of the xenomorph. <laughs> This is a game that's really best played with headphones, especially if they can simulate 7.1 surround. 
the soundscape is absolutely mind-blowing. And this attention to detail on both a visual and audio level. And what makes the experience worse. Worse or better. Is that you can hear the alien in the ceiling, the walls, under the floor when it's near you. And even if you're not looking at your motion tracker, occasionally it'll bleep, prompting you to take a look, which can be a double-edged sword, because the alien can hear the bleeps while you look at the tracker. Pro tip, never take out the motion tracker while you're in a locker. Time for a terrible segue. Much has been written about the AI of the Xenomorph in Alien Isolation. How it's free to roam the station, how it hunts you, always keeping you on your toes. Because, well, for the most part, the alien's AI is unscripted. Unlike other horror games of this type, the monster is not bound to a specific pattern. And I found that being cognizant of this fact heightens the experience. You know that this alien has a very particular set of skills. That it will hunt you. It will find you and it will kill you. You also learn pretty early on that the alien is unkillable. You can only scare him off with fire or lure it away with noisemakers. One of my favorite moments in the game is when you find a revolver and for a fleeting moment, you think that it will help you, that you have gained some power, only to realize that it takes several headshots just to take out a working Joe and the gunfire leads the alien straight to you. Oh, you can kill human survivors fairly easily. There are a couple strewn about the station, but that just puts less distraction between you and the unstoppable killing machine. It's almost like adding the gun was mandated by the publisher and Creative Assembly went out of their way to make it completely ineffectual. It's amazing. Basically, the whole game is like a long, and I do mean long, game of cat and mouse. Only the mouse is an indestructible killer with a love for chest penetration. It takes roughly 20 to 25 hours to complete depending on how much time you spend in lockers, which honestly is a bit long for any horror game, but I enjoyed being in that world so much that I didn't mind. The station is a hell of a place to visit beautifully realized and nuanced in its presentation. With all that being said, having played it, I can understand why at release it got mixed reviews. On two ends of the spectrum, PC Gamer reviewed it highly, even honoring it with their Game of the Year award for 2014. In their review, Andy Kelly wrote, It's ridiculous that it took the developer of a historical RTS to finally create an authentic alien game, but Creative Assembly have managed it. Isolation is a taut, confident and electrifying horror game that perfectly captures the essence of Ridley Scott's legendary film. And then on the low end, Tom Chick for Quarter to Three wrote, So what does it tell you that when the alien arrives, the game design falls apart? It tells you the team fell in love with the idea before they could make it work. You're creeping around in a really cool haunted space house when an invulnerable instant fail state lunges out at you. Alien Isolation is a divisive game and it's not without problems. Some of the animations are a bit wonky. The story definitely does play second fiddle to the world and some of the voice acting is a bit wooden and lifeless. But none of that mattered to me, nor detracted from the overall experience. If you've played it, you either love it or hate it. But if you haven't played it, I wholeheartedly recommend picking it up. Even if you end up hating it, you will have at least experienced a horror game with a well-realized world and truly terrifying moments. And that'll just about wrap up this episode of Escape from Mount Backlog. Have you played Alien Isolation? Have I interested you in playing it? Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, hit that little notification bell if you haven't already so you can get notified when I upload more videos. And remember to check out the Twitter and the Facebook for updates. 
I'm going to try and be more active on those. So that's a thing. Also, this is just the first week of October. So I guess I'll have to tune in next week to see what the next horror game will be. But I will give you a hint. It's something a little more down to earth. See you next time.